Hello, this is Megha Pandre, and today we will continue with the second part of the chapter, the selfish giant, and we will continue with the help of a PPT. Now, hopeful, but the spring never came, nor the summer. The autumn gave golden fruits to every garden, but to the giant's garden she gave none. He is too selfish, she said. So it was always winter there, and the north wind and the hail and the frost and the snow danced about through the trees. Now, in this, the spring came to every garden, but to the giant's garden was always hail, frost, and snow danced. Now, with this paragraph. One morning, the giant was lying awake in the bed when he heard some lovely music. It sounded so sweet to his ears that he thought it must be the king's musicians passing by. It was really only a little linnet singing outside his window. But it was so long since he had heard a bird singing in his garden that it seemed to him to be the most beautiful music in the world. Then the hail stopped dancing over his head and the north wind ceased roaming and a delicious perfume came to him through the open casement. I believe that I believe the spring has come at last, said the giant, and he jumped out of bed and looked out. Now one morning the giant heard the melodious song of a bird. Initially, the giant thought that it must be the king's musician passing by. He saw a wonderful sight. Through a little hole in the wall, the children had crept in and were sitting in the branches of the trees. In every trees that he had seen there was a little child. And the trees were so glad to have the children back again that they had covered themselves with blossoms and were waving their arms gently about children's head. The birds were flying about and twittering with delight and the flowers were looking up through the green grass and laughing. It was so lovely. It was a lovely scene. Now, the giant rejoiced as he was sure that the spring has arrived. He looked out and found that the children were back again. Every tree was blossoming as a child was sitting on his branch. So this was the explanation of this paragraph. Now next. Only in one corner it was still winter. It was the farthest corner of the garden. And it was standing a little boy. He was so small that he could not reach up to the branches of the tree. And he was wondering all round it crying bitterly. Now the birds were flying, flowers were laughing, except for a place where a small child could not climb the tree. The poor tree was still covered with frost and snow and the north wind was blowing and roaring above it. Climb up little boy, said the tree, and it bent its branches down as low as it could. But the boy was too tiny. Now here the explanation, the poor tree wanted the child as frost, snow and north wind were blowing on that. And the giant heard heart melted as he looked out. How selfish I have been, he said. Now I know why the spring would not come here. I will put that poor little boy onto the top of the tree and then I will knock down the wall and my garden shall be the children's playground forever and ever. He was really very sorry for what he had done. Now, in this part, uh, the giant realized his mistake and decided to break the wall. So he crept downstairs and opened the front door quite softly and went out to the garden. But when the children saw him, they were so frightened 
that they all ran away and the garden became winter again now the explanation part when he went downstairs who the who the giant when the giant went downstairs and opened the front door but the children were frightened to see him only the little boy did not run for his eyes were so full of tears that he did not see the giant coming and the giant stole up be and the giant stole up behind him and took him gently in his hand and put him up into the tree and the tree broke at once into blossom and the birds came and sang on it and the little boy stretched out his two arms and clung him around the giant's neck and kissed him and the other children when they saw the giant was not wicked any longer came running back and with them came the spring now here the small boy could not run away the giant lifted the boy and put him on to a branch of the tree the tree blossomed at once now it was it is your garden now little children said the giant and he took a great axe and knocked down the wall and when the people were coming to market at 12 o'clock they found giant playing with the children in the most beautiful garden they had ever seen now in this part uh, the explanation of this part the giant behavior was changed and he allowed the other children then they entered then they entered the spring jubilant giant took an axe knocked down the wall people were surprised to see the children playing with the giant all day long they played and in the evening they came to the giant to bid him goodbye but where is your little companion he asked, he said the boy i put it into the tree the giant loved him the best because he had kissed him we don't know answered the children he has gone away you must tell him to be sure and come tomorrow said the giant but the children said that they did not know where he lived and had never seen him before and the giant felt very sad now the explanation part the giant invited every child to visit his garden with special mention to the youngest child but nobody knew him every afternoon when the school was over the children came and played with the giant but the little boy whom the giant loved was never seen again the giant was very kind to all the children yet he longed for his little friend and often spoke of him how i would like to see him he used to say years went by and the giant grew very old and feeble he could not play about any more so he sat in a huge armchair and watched the children at their gardens and admired his garden i have many beautiful flowers he said but the children are the most beautiful flowers of all uh now here the giant was kind to every child years rolled by the giant grew very old he watched the children playing while sitting in an armchair he said that the children are the most beautiful flowers of all now one winter morning he looked out of his window as he was dressing he did not hate the winter now for he knew that it was a merry the spring asleep it was merely the spring asleep and that the flowers were resting 
Suddenly he rubbed his eyes in wonder and looked and looked. He, it certainly was a marvelous sight. In the farthest corner of the garden was a tree quite covered with lovely white blossoms. Its branches were golden and silver fruits hung down from them and underneath it stood the little boy he had loved. Now, the giant no longer hated the winters. One winter morning he was surprised to see the lovely wild the blossom, white blossom, sorry. And one morning he was surprised to see lovely white blossoms. His branches were golden bearing silver fruit. They were the little boy sitting and there was the little boy was sitting underneath. Downstairs ran the giant in great joy and into the garden. He hastened across the grass and came near to the child and when he came quite close to his face, his face grew red with anger and he said, Who hath dared to wound thee? For on the palms of the child's hand were the print of two nails and the print of two nails were on the little feet. Who hath dared to wound thee? cried the giant. Tell me that I may take my big, swords, big sword and slay him. Now, he was very happy and rushed towards him, towards the child. On seeing his hand, he grew angry. He wanted to punish the wrongdoers. Nah, answered the child. But these are the wounds of love. Who art thou? said the giant. And a strange awe fell on him. And he knelt before the little child. And the child smiled on the giant and said to him, You let me play once in your garden. Today you shall come with me to my garden, which is paradise. And when the children ran in that afternoon, they found that the giant lying dead under the tree, all covered with white blossoms. Now, but the child replied that, those were wounds of love. The giant was shocked to hear such an answer. And he then asked about him, who replied gently that once he allowed him to play him in his garden, now he would take him along. When the children came to play in the afternoon, they found the giant lying dead covered with white blossoms now here i end up with my explanation of the chapter the selfish giant till then take care and goodbye thank you